So, adventure bike. Most people think if you buy one, you're gonna load the thing up with your entire life, ride to the moon, the road of bones, all that stuff all around the world. The cold hard reality of owning an adventure bike is that you're probably gonna end up commuting on it, maybe go for the odd Sunday ride, pretty much do the same kind of riding you can do on any bike. We've chosen today the Tracer 900 and the Ducati Multistrada 950. I've got Aaron from Knox, hi, who's come down from Cumbria. Over the, the Lake, Dis Lake District. Miles away, um, the kind of place that if you rode to it, you'd probably need a passport or uh, a ferret. Or That's right, and we all wear uh, shell suits <laughs> up there. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, Aaron's been riding for 10 or 11 years. He does about 1,000 miles a year. He's a leisure rider. He's the perfect guy to take out on these two for a coffee to Box Hill, out on the roads around Box Hill. Let's have a chat about how these bikes make you feel, the difference between the two of them, which one he would pick, which one I would pick. Let's go and ride bikes. So as with any bike in any sector, it's, it's the certain kind of blend of ingredients that manufacturers put together that can make or break a bike. And the difference between this and the Multistrada behind me, they're relatively stark, both on paper and out on the road. The easiest way to talk about MT-09 Tracer and how, how well it's developed is to look at the MT series in general. There was an MT-09 before there was an MT-09 Tracer. The problems that that bike had were ironed out before they started making this one. Early issues with fueling on MT-09, with the forks being a little bit kind of vague and there being this little bit of head shake when you're going a little bit too fast on MT-09. By the time they rolled the Tracer out, all of those issues had been dealt with, ironed out, which made this bike A, a better bike than the MT-09 that it was based on and B, a better bike than pretty much anything in its class. 115 horsepower triple, CP3 I think it's called for you nerds. An inline triple in any format, whether it's a Triumph Street triple or an MT-09, pretty much anything, it's a cracking motor. It gives the perfect blend of bottom end torque for round town stuff. Motorway cruising is easy, absolutely fracking the nuts off the thing, sounds amazing and there's always a nice pocket of power tucked up the top. The big differences between these two bikes are pretty much things that nobody that stood on the side of the road would see when you're riding past. You've got to jump on both of these take the same road on the same day, ride them both back to back and you'll get a feel for maybe something that could justify the extra couple of grand that you'll spend on the Multistrada or over the Yamaha, or maybe something that will turn you off spending the money and make you want to go and buy the blue one. This bike simply has better tech on it than the MT-09 Tracer. Rather than having that standard A and B riding mode format, with this one you get four modes, sports, touring, urban and enduro modes. Not only is the electro trickery that's going on inside it different, I think it's also a little bit better quality as well. It, it kind of crosses over into the hardware that you're using. So you can see these pretty Brembo brakes up the front, but what you can't see going on inside the bike is the Bosch ABS system that I know is fantastic. So much like that modular thing that Yamaha did with the MT series, what Ducati are able to do is lift all the good bits from the rest of their range as well. You get that Hyperstrider engine in this. I think there is a little bit of a tweak to the airbox. You still get 113 horsepower. It's a little beauty of a motor. That sack shock that's mounted out the side and at the back on this bike looks great, feels great, works great. If me and you were going on bikes now from here to Morocco, I'd take this every single time. If me and you were going on bikes from here to Manchester, I'd probably take the blue one. start of the day you had your pick of the bikes and as you said when we stop for fuel you don't do many miles you don't jump from bike to bike so you plumped for the bike that looked the most the easiest to manage so you went for the Yamaha sure and it was a seat height based decision we were talking about at the petrol station I'm sure you're not going to lose any sleep tonight before I when you find out that actually the Multishada has a lower seat height than the Tracer the bike that you started on by it's tiny it's five millimeters Yamaha is an adjustable seat height from 845 to 860, which is great. Multistrada is set at 840. 840? Yeah. Wow. So it's actually I mean, shorter. So how did you feel first couple of miles on the Tracer? Oh, it felt absolutely fantastic. Really predictable, really easy to ride, really easy to get used to. The power delivery is just silky smooth. It's dead nimble, feels lightweight. Mm -hmm. You could just jump on that bike and just, just ride it with, with total confidence, yep. in my opinion. And I think one of the key, or one of the strongest points for that bike is definitely that, that 
motor, that CP3 triple in line, sure. 115 horsepower. It's it's skinny. The revs are easy to get out. Like I said, the fueling is really good. I think it makes m more riders feel more at home sooner than the than the layout that the multi shrader has. You know, you just you were just talking about smoothness, and it just made me think about the. Um, a suspension on the multi strada oh man i mean that is like riding a magic carpet yeah it is yeah. a super smooth thing isn't it yeah it really is both bikes have got adjustable suspension but there's just something about the um the the quality of ride that you get on the mm. brakes on the gas you know turning in pretty much everywhere ducati suspension front and rear for me miles better than the tracer oh yeah it's absolutely fantastic i mean it is so smooth it's like you you're going over the over the bumps and and it just soaks them up. Every yeah. pothole, it just soaks up much more effectively than, than the Tracer. But I do know that the um, uh, one of the biggest forum issues that the Tracer has had, uh, whether or not forums are the same as real life, we'll never quite figure out. But one of the issues on, on forums from various people that have ridden Tracer is that there's a little bit of an instability issue. And, it, uh, and I know that the base settings that those bikes come from when you buy them off the shop floor, they need to be tweaked to, to suit the size of you know, who the, the, man, the man inside. Well, yeah, I mean, I, there's more man inside me than there is man inside <laughs> you. I'll never say that again on camera. Uh, you know, I'm bigger than you are. Yeah. By rights, I should crack the spanners out and adjust that thing to suit me. Maybe not just the suspension. I don't know if you would agree, but the touch points, everything you touch on Multistrada, it feels like it matches the price. It's a quality product, it's a sure. premium product. 100%. And it's not necessarily taking anything away from the Yamaha or the fact that it's a Japanese bike. It is very, very good at what it does, and it does all of the same kind of things. There's, there's been premium. a little bit more consideration in terms of design and, and end user experience. Sure, and I have to, I have to say that the, that the mirrors on, on the Multistrada are the best mirrors I've ever had yeah. on a motorcycle. They're and fantastic, they fit, you know, they're so sturdy. And I think maybe know. lots of people would think that's a and boring thing enough. to talk about. Yeah. Oh, the mirrors, boo-hoo. Yeah, the motor's brilliant in the Tracer, and yeah, it does break good wheelies, but not everybody, not everybody cares about that stuff. Sure. The real life day-to-day -day nature of these bikes and who buys them are people that are commuting in the dark, in the rain, they need decent mirrors, they need screens that are easy to get at. So we've discussed earlier when we were chatting at the side of the road about the power, they're both there or thereabouts, 115 horsepower. The, the layouts and configurations of the motors mean that they deliver that power and torque in a completely different way to each other. I probably prefer the way the Ducati delivers its power, but I prefer the package that the Tracer has in general in terms of the kind of riding that I'm into. Sure. I've been around and doing skids and wheelies. And yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, for me, I think it's just the, it's just the predictability of that, of that triple. I mean, I could have swore, it, had you not told me and had I not looked at you know, how many pipes are coming out of the engine, that that was, a, that that was an inline four. It just felt so smooth and so uh, linear in terms of its, of its power. You know, I, I, I really like that, that, that kind of power delivery. Do you think the fact that there's 20 kilos in weight difference between Multi and Tracer would have any impact on your purchase decision? Multistrada is 20 kilos heavier, ready to ride. I'm talking, uh, you've got a nine on 230 kilos there and 210 for the Yamaha. The, the weight you definitely can feel at low speed, you know, turning around in the road, you can definitely feel that extra uh, 20 kilos. Having said that, the Multistrada has got much. Leverage. It has, it has, yeah. and you don't need to do a three point turn. You can just go right yeah. round. I think we could both agree that in, in aesthetic appeal alone, if we're just basing it on looks, we're both going home with a Multistrada. 100%. I don't know about you, but when I get home, I've got thousands of children uh, and a wife, uh, and, and the Multistrada is £2,000 more expensive than, than the Tracer, and that's a big chunk of change to have to justify, A, to, to myself, and B, to um, my children who, are, who aren't getting any Christmas presents because I've spent all of the money on a, on a shiny Ducati. The Yamaha is just about £9,000, 8995 or something. The 950 Multistrada is, is a £10,995 bike. You and I can feel the quality in the parts that we've used today, whether they're buttons and switch gear or suspension or brakes, whatever they are, the bike is definitely worth the money. Sure. If you just look at that bike. The question that, that I could do with answering is, is, is the 950 Multistrada worth the premium over the 900 Tracer? But the price is, obviously, it's a factor, it's a consideration. Having said that, in every way the Multistrada is, you know, you can see that extra £2,000, yeah. you know, yeah. the switch gear, the bits like the mirrors, the finishing, the it is, yeah, it is a beautiful, beautiful machine. Yeah, but if I'm just commuting day to day, and I'm just, you know, nipping from here to the shops, or I'm going out for a Sunday morning blast, I think for me it's probably going to be the Yamaha. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I totally agree.
going to round the day off by sticking to answering the original question that we asked of ourselves at the start of the day. Do you need 1200 cc's and a kind of full Charlie Borman spec lifestyle to get away with justifying having an adventure bike in your life? The short answer is no, I don't think you do. Unless you genuinely are about to start schlepping off around the world. If all you want to do is impress your mates and, and kind of convince them that you're that adventure lifestyle guy, pretty much 99 men out of 100 wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and the 1200cc version anyway. Go sub 1000cc, save the whales, save the donkeys, save the tigers and the lions and the lemurs and all the other endangered stuff. Uh, but most important of all, save some money. Mm -hmm.